Portrait Artist, I mean Landscape Artist of the Year, Season 5, Episode 3. This is an interesting episode. The last episode that we did had fabulous painters, so many good painters that really everybody should have won. That's not the case in this episode, so let's get started. And please leave me a thumbs up and subscribe. Yay! We love a subscribe. It makes me happy. All right, so let's take a look. First, we see the artists with the painting they submitted in order to be on the program. This is a very graphic piece. It's a print. So um, remember, the judges are looking for something interesting and different. They don't want to just see pretty paintings, although this Joe McKenzie does. But, but I appreciate all art. But I wanted to, us to be able to see this more close up. Also, I didn't say in the introduction, this is a recap. If you want to watch the entire program, go to YouTube and put in the episode uh, and the number, and you will be able to see this for free because Prime Video is not carrying the program. It's such a shame that they dropped it because I think they're on season 11 of Landscape Artist of the Year. So, um, you know, it's a very popular program. Ooh, wow. Now this is what I, remember, landscape isn't just pretty pastures and barns and, and uh, you know, quiet, quiet countryside. Their urban scapes are included as well as anything like this. So um, I still wish there was a still life painter of the year as well. I think that's a whole category that could be explored. Um, so we've looked at two artists. This is the third one. And this is, looks very, very leafy. So... Again, we'll have to we'll we'll see what she has to do today. We're always looking for consistency and and maybe a singular style. Wow, that's really that's really pretty. <laughs> uh, I like it. You know, the emphasis is often on trees, and this is the different view. This makes you look through the trees up into the sky. I think we've all done that from time to time, maybe in the backyard or that moment when you just appreciate a small thing. I love this kind of painting. First of all, I love the subject matter. I've painted my laundry as well when it's up on the line. They're dancing forms in space. It's just, I find it kind of a delightful thing. Um, and I think she did a really beautiful job. Yeah, that's really, really nice. Look at the oranges down in the grass. There, that's what I'm talking about when I talk about color value swap outs. If you don't have those oranges to contrast with their complementary color, it, it, the painting just ends up being a wall of green. And this, this, this has a lot of green. I do see a lot of green, but it's broken up. Now, she is a person that draws in pen and ink. So everything is going to be black and white quite graphic and quite detailed. Now, she's only going to have four hours today to complete her task, so she's not going to have a whole lot of time. But you can see she's um, her thing is, is detail and, and line, not necessarily even lyrical line, but it's a contrast. It's a contrast from what we usually see. Here's the next one up. Here's a really classic urban scape. I, I think this is pretty fantastic, too. You know, these, these forms are not easy to make. Now we get a chance to look at it a little bit more close up. Look at all the graffiti he put in there. And there's a lot of depth going through that tunnel space. Wow. That's... I also like that they're busy areas and quiet areas. I'm always looking for that in paintings too. Yeah, we have, these are, we have, a, we have a good field going on here. Yeah, I don't think it's, I think, I don't think my initial reaction was that the feel is not good, but the, uh, as usual, it ends up with the judging. We'll get there. It's, it's, for me, a very disappointing judging experience in this episode. I don't know if it will be for you as well. See the orange in the trees? Yeah. Yeah, orange against green is, is really, really effective. Um... Yeah, I'm looking for some diagonals. I'm seeing a few. Yeah, it's a good thing those those roofs have the diagonals. The, oh, this one. This was one that really captured my heart. We're going to get a better look at it in a second. But this is a cityscape done from a high vantage point. And it's really a study in grays. And oh my gosh, look at the distance he has going on there. It's so complex. And yet... It's also just based on good design. 
I just think that's a really, really powerful painting. Look at so many diagonals to balance the horizontal that you're just, oh, and look at that vertical go. Oh, wow, that's got a lot going on for it. All right, where we are today? We are at Millennium Bridge. Now, Millennium Bridge is, this is really a beautiful structure. It's, it's kind of an amazing structure. I think it's a bridge that you walk on. I don't think it has car traffic. And it has an interesting suspension system that looks like wires. Of course, they're not wires. You know, those must be cables. Well, there, no, cars go on it. It looks so thin and elegant. It's, it's, it's an amazing thing. I, I, I think it's quite beautiful. Um, I think I have a place where we get to see the vantage point that they are looking at it from. Because remember, they're put in these pods. There they are in the pods on the left. So their vantage point is pretty much all the same. You know, they can turn their easels in different directions, but, but for the most part, you know, you, I, think, I think you kind of have to consider that arch. And that arch is going to be uh, something, if it was me, I know I'm going to have to break that arch up. I, it's too dominant to leave it whole. But let's see what the artists do. That's what's fun, to see how different people do things and how they solve the problem. Everyone's going to paint the same thing, but they're going to do it in different ways. Here are all the paintings that they did for the day, and the judging is going to begin. And we're missing one of the judges, and I think it's because she's just very pregnant at the time. She comes back for the next episode, so she might be in and out this season. So here's the first one up. Oh, I really, really like this painting a lot. Look at all the color variation, the work in the water, which is quiet but reflective cloud movement, it, it, it has a fluidity to it that I, that I really enjoy. And, oh, that diagonal in the bottom right-hand corner, wow, that's super important too. This must be the vantage point that they had right from their pod. That's, that's my best guess. And if I remember correctly, and I probably don't, because hashtag Joe was always wrong, this, this is the one that has the complete arch in it, but I think it really works. Now here's the one that was done by the printmaker. I don't know what this has to do with the bridge at all. My, I guess what it is is an impression of the different forms that were in front of him in the bridge. Please forgive me for this, but it looks like the pocket of Levi's denim jeans. I can't get that. I can't release my brain from seeing it as a textile, which is wrong. I know that I'm locked in my, my brain and... Um, and that's my own fault. I, I'm, I'm sure you're being able to see something that I'm not able to see. Now, this is a drawing. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's always hard to judge drawings against paintings because they just, for the most part, don't carry the same weight. And this is going to be a gallery commission. I think it's a 12,000 pound commission that's going to appear in a gallery. So it's going to be a large size and it's going to appear on an enormous wall. And this just isn't going to have that kind of gravitas, but it's a beautiful drawing. Oh, here's another one. See, now that isn't the complete arch. And um, I think that was wise to have it go off the paper, but not be completely cut off from the paper. You can, it's not that it doesn't cut the form, but you can tell the form is going to continue. It's very different if you cut it. Um, it's, uh, this one is quite graphic as well, but there's some really nice color work going on there. And I think this probably was the vantage point that they had from the pod. Yeah, that would be my best guess. All right, so this is, I don't remember which artist we're up to now. This might be the fourth, but we are getting a, a strong variety. Now the one's going to come that, I like this one the best. I'm going to reveal it. Yes, I like this one the best because this was done by the person that did that um, Scott, sky view um, vantage point from the sky, from the rooftops of London, which was very monochromatic. This is much less monochromatic, but I think it was smart to just bring in a piece of that arch. Now we're going to come in and get certain details. In the recaps, uh, they don't always show, well, actually in the program as well, if they don't favor a painting, they don't necessarily show you some of these details. I put the hand in there so we could see, get an idea of the size. Everybody worked in a pretty decent size today. I think at least maybe a 16 by 26 would be my guess, something like that. They're, they're fairly good sizes. You don't need huge brushes, but nobody worked in a tiny manner today. 
but this one is very strong to me and shows good design. I really like this one too. Again, taking care of that, you know, the real challenge is what are you going to do with this dominant form, this arch? Making it go off the top of the paper, that's probably what I would have done, yeah, because you still get a feeling for the arch, but, but uh, it doesn't dominate the entire space. Finding that balance, finding that balance between your horizontals and your verticals. And look at those puff, puffy, puffy clouds. Those, those are really delightful. It's a very warm color palette, which I'm always going to respond to a, a warm color palette and, and uh, softness of edges. Wow, I wonder how they did that. You probably know. You painters probably know how they get those lines like that. There must be a device, right? Maybe it's the edge of your palette knife. I don't know. As a watercolorist, I'm not sure how you would do that. I'm pretty sure you'd have to do it with a lot of bravery, a flat brush, and <laughs> move really, really fast. Uh, this is the next one up, which is, um, we saw a little detail of it, and it's quite, it, it's quite sketchy in the way that the paint is applied, so it's not um, lustrous. There's a lot of movement, though. And, you know, we get an idea of the space and the place. Now we're going to get a little bit of a detail, which will be nice. Yeah, see? It's kind of a in between a drawing and a painting in a way. I don't think it's as strong as maybe some of the other ones we've had come up, but you know, art is subjective. You'll probably disagree with me and that's fine. Ooh, wow, oh, I like that. Why do I like that so much? It has a complete arch, which I thought for sure would be a deal breaker, but it works here. It definitely works. I think that shadow coming, that's a shadow coming from the top of the easel there, so I don't think that exists. Darn it, because I like it as a shape. Let's get another look at it and see what happens. Yeah, no, it was just a shadow. Ah, that's that's a good, good answer to the task. I think it completes, completes the task they want it done. Wow, yeah, that's really powerful. All right, now we're going to get to the part where the judges are going to, judges are going to do their judging. Oh, and I already know the outcome of this one. I don't always know the outcome, but I do know the outcome of this one. And I'm already heartbroken. So I don't want to push that on you, but um, I was sad about the outcome. But let's look and see what happens. So only three artists are going to go forward to be in the semifinals of this particular episode. They've been there all day. You can tell it's later in the day. No one, luckily, has to be wearing a jacket and, and gloves and whatnot, so it couldn't have been that cold, so that's good. But it's a long, long day. You know, you're standing up, you're out in the elements, you're out of, out of your studio. So here's the first one up, which was the drawing. And this was done by the woman who did that um, paint and, uh, I don't want to say paint, uh, pen and ink. So this is her, the more softer version of what she does. This is the man who had done that. Uh, rooftop scape that I like so much. I still favor this immensely. I think it's quite, quite powerful and speaks to his ability to do, to do the final commission. He's a good designer. He's a really good designer. And the last one was the one that surprised me with the whole arch. I don't think it's as powerful as the one we just saw, but I don't know what the judges are looking for. And, you know, if I was a judge, I know which one I would pick. But it would be a boring program because I'm always going to pick the paintings I like and they're going to probably all fit in a pretty standard category. All right, so now we get to see the painting that they did in order to be on the program next to the one that they did in four hours. So they had unlimited time for the one on the left and only four hours for the, for the one on the right. Although if, they do, if you don't eat lunch, you do get an extra hour there you can use. Um, but you are interrupted for interviews and you've got a crowd behind you and the conditions are, are just not in your favor. So that is our first one. This is the second one. I, I, I don't know. Do you agree with me? I just think this is so powerful. I don't know how, how you can pass this up. Uh, I don't know what else you might possibly be looking or asking for, but, but um, it must be too standard for them. I, I'm baffled. I'm always baffled by what they decide. And here is the next one. I was surprised that this was her entry. I was not thrilled with, with the one that she did as her entry because of a lack of um, some design elements I would have liked to see in terms of using diagonals. But boy, did she, she knocked it out of the park today. 
So, um, you know, obviously it's going to be any one of the three of them. I think it should be the middle guy or the woman on the right, but um, we will see. Only one will go forward to the semifinals, which is probably around episode eight or something like that. And this is only episode four, three. I don't remember. The winner is, dun, 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 dun. yep, it's this one, which I just don't think is the strongest effort of the day. But it's what the judges want. And, uh, and that's the way the program is. And I just feel very lucky to see the art with you. And thank you for joining me. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color. Please join my YouTube channel. See you next time. Okay, bye-bye.